Hi viewers, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to talk in detail about the mathematical model which governs the mechanics of power screws. There are plenty of videos out there which talks about the mechanics of power screws. They will give you all formulae but most of the videos that I saw were found to lack an intuitive understanding of the concept. So in this video my aim is to build that intuition into you regarding the mechanics of power screws. So without much ado let's get started. I have a figure here of a power screw setup. Here you have the screw, here you have a translating nut, input torque is applied here. Whenever we discuss about power screws they are used for transmitting power. One thing you should always remain remember in your mind is that whenever we talk about power screws there are these things these are the thrust collar or the thrust washer they are really important part of this whole assembly now the question posed to you is if I know my W the external load that is to be lifted if I know my thread dimensions by thread dimensions I mean the helix angle the thread angle the lead angle, the pitch, all those details are known, root diameter, major diameter, all those things are known, let's say. Now what is the torque required here to rise the load? So I have already posted a video describing all these parameters, what is root radius, what is major radius, what is thread angle, what is pitch. So I hope you would have watched those videos. Now without waiting much of a time on describing those things, let's straight away attack the question that we have in our hand. What is the input torque requirement? Before we go ahead and start writing equations, think what are the forces that resist the movement of this load up the screw or as I am raising the load what are the forces that are that are going to resist this motion there are two predominant forces one is the friction between the thrust collar and the thrust washer and the second is the frictional force arising here here we have the threads mating with the translating nut the physics which governs the behavior here is pretty much straightforward but here that is not the case so let's attack this portion of the problem first. What we are going to do is that we'll take one thread, probably it will be in a circular shape. Now what you have to do is you unwrap it. As you unwrap it, what you will get, the screw will form an inclined plane. So you had a screw in your hand and then you are, as you are unwrapping it, you will get an inclined plane. And the translating nut can be thought of as a block of mass which you are trying to push against the inclined plane. So this is analogous to our screw and this is analogous to our nut. So what we are going to do here, we are trying to raise the load. So let's say this is the external load PR that I am trying, that I am applying to raise the load. Let's say W is the external load acting on the nut. What would be the angle of this inclined plane? As we know, the pitch of the thread is little p. And we got this inclined plane after unwrapping one circle of the thread. So this length will be the perimeter which is given by pi dm where dm is the mean diameter of the thread. What are the other forces that will be acting here? Obviously there will be friction. So what will be friction trying to do? So friction will try to resist the motion in this way. Let me call that the force of friction. This angle, this is known as the lead angle of the thread. Make sense? So lead angle here as they are shown here, this is the lead angle and the, here also we will get the same lead angle. Now let's find out what will be the PR required to raise this nut or to push this nut across this inclined plane. 
this is fairly straightforward what we have to do we can sum up the forces in two perpendicular directions i will sum up the forces in this direction initially then in this direction did i miss any force component yes i did so there is another force which is acting onto the nut from the screw face that is a normal force so once we consider all these four forces we can write equations of motions in these two directions then we can solve for pr in the interest of time i'm not going to explain the whole mathematics because it is available in every other textbook what is missing in most of the textbook is the intuition behind it let's just summarize we told that there are two resisting forces and then we focused on the first resisting force in fact the resisting force between the nut and the screw we are focusing on that particular resisting force and we said that this is how the free body diagram will look like when you are trying to raise the load what happens or how the free body diagram will look like when you're trying to lower the load it will look like this this time what you're trying to do you're trying to bring the nut down the inclined plane that's the only difference uh, they are not too di different apart whatever we have discussed so far holds true for a square thread in a minute i will get back to how these equations will differ when we talk about an acme thread as as shown over here but for the time being hold that thought let's summarize the equations what we get once we do it for the square threads then we will modify the equations to come back here which is a more realistic situation this is how the equation will look like the torque required to raise is nothing but the load times the radius makes sense but dm is the mean diameter of the screw now this load required is a function of the external load and the lead angle because lead angle is the inclination of your inclined plane and phi phi is nothing but it is related to the coefficient of friction between the nut and the screw and they are related as shown over here so you know all these parameters now you have an expression for what is the torque that is required to raise make sense now when if you are asked to compute what is the torque required to lower the weight or lower the nut it is again straightforward it will be a function of the external load and this time the expression is tan phi minus alpha times dm by 2 see this comes from simply cranking the mathematical wheel and solving the equations of equilibrium for the free body diagram which corresponds to lowering the load where you had the external load acting from left right to left okay in the first case when you were trying to raise the load the external load was acting from left to right a couple of minutes back i told that whatever we have derived so far holds true only for square threads what will happen when we have an acme thread and what will be the influence of this thread angle for a square thread this thread angle is zero because these will not be inclined they will be straight for a square thread what happens when you have an acme thread what happens here is see this is the direction in which your frictional force is acting f f far i will write and this is the direction in which now normal force is acting this is your capital n so in this case your normal force is directly proportional to the external load divided by cos alpha so here this f is the external load so in, throughout the video we were using w so for let me use w so the normal force is no longer directly proportional to w l on but it is proportional to w divided by cos alpha and we all know cos alpha assumes values between 0 to 1 so normal force is increasing when you have an acme thread this is because of the wedge effect I hope you would have learned about wedge effect when you studied about basic friction but for the time being uh, there is an increased friction force when you have an acme thread it is because of the wedge effect happening here as you can see here the force of friction is directly proportional to n and n is directly proportional to w divided by cos alpha so what happens you need to slightly modify the equations I will show you that in a minute 
So let's sum up. The effect of the angle alpha is to increase the frictional force by the wedging action of the threads. Uh, let me explain the same thing using this figure also. See, this is the 3D view and this is the view as we are looking from this side. We are looking from this side. So this is how it will look like. When you had a square thread, see, there will be a lead angle because we cannot live without lead angle. It doesn't matter whether you are working with an acme or a square. But if we are, if we had a if we had a square thread, then this alpha value was zero. Here, this is the lead angle lambda, and alpha is the thread angle. Okay, so but when you have an acme thread in this plane also there is an angle this is the angle which causes an increase in the normal force make sense so this is how the developed view will look like and this is looking at this view from this direction make sense here what i have shown is first i have shown the torque required to raise the load for a square thread this is nothing but I've simply expanded the formula of tan A plus B, which is tan A plus tan B divided by 1 minus tan A tan B. But for an acme thread, what happens is the coefficient of friction is increased by a factor of cos alpha. 1 by cos alpha, I would rather say, to be very precise. So this is the torque required to raise the load when you have an acme thread. And this is the torque required to raise the load when you have square thread makes sense but you need see we had two resisting forces we have an expression for the first resisting force now what about the second resisting force as i was explaining we this particular term is accounting for the friction or the resisting force arising from this junction what about the resisting force from this point this is fairly straightforward because we have a mean collar radius rc which is nothing dc divided by 2 then if we know the coefficient of friction between these interface between these two interface then if w is the external load acting from the top then the torque required against this resisting force is nothing but this term make sense so this is how we broke down the problem into two pieces and finally we are assembling all those pieces together. So this is the torque required to raise the load in this kind of a setup. See it's a function of your thread dimensions uh, like dimensions in the sense your mean diameter then your lead angle which is a function of your pitch then it's a function of the coefficient of friction between this interface it's a function of the coefficient of friction between these two interfaces so it's all falls in place isn't it what happens uh, when you if you want to compute the torque requires to lower the load this is how the expression will look like when for the torque which is required to lower the load for a square thread where your included thread angle is zero again see there is only one difference here it is phi minus alpha and once we expand this equation, this is the final expression. This is due to the collar friction and this is due to the friction between the nut and the screw. Clear? What will be a self-locking screw? See, a self-locking screw is one for which you need to apply a torque in order to lower the load. So you want this quantity to assume a positive value. That means mu should be greater than P divided by pi dm or we can say tan phi greater than tan alpha where alpha is your lead angle of the thread which is a function of your thread dimensions while phi is a coefficient of friction sorry phi is the friction cone angle which is a function of your coefficient of friction between the nut and the thread interface make sense so in this video i have explained the whole mechanics of power screws how it can be idealized to a block moving against an inclined plane and i explained what is a self-locking screw and what is the condition uh, for a screw to be self-locking in a nutshell the friction should be more okay 
then it will be a self locking thanks for watching i hope i clarified all your doubts and i hope you have the correct intuition now rather than just a set of mathematical equations